Hello everybody, we are back in Train Sim Classic today and uh, we are playing the Chatham Mainline in this very nice Class 465 in Network South East livery and uh, I am using the AP uh, Armstrong Powerhouse Enhancement uh, 465 and um, it is looking very nice, the sounds are particularly good on this and uh, the scenario that we are doing is 2B49, Black Fairs to Seven Oaks. And we are already underway. The, um, the loco is already on its service. We're joining it right now as it is moving. So, uh, yeah, we can jump right in and uh, get on with it. So, as you can see, the loco has already started to go. Uh, we should have everything sort of set up uh, we won't really be um, slowing down too much I do want cab lights however there we go I don't know where they are on here particularly and our first stop is Denmark Hill um, I haven't really played this map a lot and uh, I don't know if no I don't think this works Yeah, quite a decent loco, to be honest. Um, I do like the 465, and I think the four is it the 466, something like that. And it seems that we've got a different loco on the on the back here. Oh yeah, we've got 466 on the back. Um, we can get going here. I don't know why it was slowing down so significantly, but that's okay. What time was we supposed to get there? 51. So we're, we're not too far away. Bump this up to notch 2. And uh, this Chatham mainline is, I believe it's fairly old. Um, now, and it, you can sort of tell it's a bit, it's not the greatest. Um, it could use some enhancing. It's quite a foggy day. It is autumn, I believe. We haven't really looked at the briefing, to be honest, but uh, 13 stops. Um, quite a foggy day in Train Sim. As we come into Denmark Hill here. That was a bit weird, it didn't fully play the sound on that. Um, I believe this is an AP um, enhanced loco. The scenario is a um, an AP Armstrong Powerhouse scenario. I'll just use this dynamic brake here, which is a uh, the combined power and brake lever. But yeah, this this map in particular, this route is um, fairly old now. So it's uh, the textures aren't that great. Um, not sure if this has a DR A. Mm, doesn't look like it. The speed set dial, that's quite cool. And um, no, this loco's fairly it might just have a sound um at the pantograph. Yeah, see all these sort of it's just quite an old model you see doesn't look like we've got DRA okay not a problem um, and we can get going I 
it's a four six five in is that first first class livery I can't remember what that is yeah really like the network southeast um, livery it's, it's such a nice livery especially on these networkers they are very nice it's not, not got far to go to the next station I think a lot of these are not far from each other I mean the overall route is 14 mile which is nothing really uh, might have a yellow coming up oh, I think that's the DRA there yeah DRA so it does have one so we will use that when we get to the station which will start slowing down now getting back into the swing of things coming into stations and whatnot is um, tricky I tend to I tend to fly into the station a bit hot and then you you know you you're applying the brake too too hard then I try not to uh, I try not to um, do that and vice versa I tend to come into them a bit slow sometimes this is a nice speed I think we're on time. It's a cool, uh, cool image there. Nope. Um, pressing all the wrong buttons. Fifty-four. Yeah. So we're basically on time, essentially. Oh, that guy just literally walked through the cab. <laughs> He's doing it again. Excuse me, sir. stuck in circles <laughs> interesting never seen that in trains before never don't know if it's just a uh, because this is quite an old line an um, old um, route um, some of the newer stuff some of the new uh, maps are oh we didn't use the DRA did we oh well Yeah, some of the newer um, routes are a lot more polished, a lot more, the textures look a bit better, uh, they're a lot sharper. The AI is um, a lot more polished. But we like these lot, we like these older routes, they are somewhat special. ETA 56 it doesn't actually give us a number for this next platform, so. Guess we can just arrive at any time that we want. There's another commuter. I really like how AP do their AI. Um, Dovetail tend to. That would have been in a dovetail like standard route, standard scenario. That would have just been all one train, um, all one livery, which does happen a lot in in real life. But um, what also happens a lot in real life is they mix and match um, running stock because they might not have enough of one um, enough of one liveried stock. And they still need to like add a rake, um, a full rake of like maybe eight, but they only have six of one livery. For instance, um, I'll show you in a sec. Our rake is consistent of two different liveried locos and actually two different models. We are in a, 
uh, 465 and we actually got a 466 behind us. Yeah, it doesn't actually give us a time here, so I'm pretty sure we're all right to uh, sort of make our way along this line now. This is a perfect example of me coming into this station a bit too slow. Um, I braked a bit too early. So I've had to notch up. You shouldn't ever have to notch up. I'm going to apply the DRA as well. Doors open. So yeah, as you can see on the back of our loco here, we I can't remember what livery this is, um, but we have a 466 on the back in a different livery to our 465 up front and this is pretty typical in the um, in the world of rail so uh, that's what I like about AP scenarios is um, they actually make the AI conform to that which is quite cool uh, platform duties has been completed oh, didn't want to do it that way And we are already onto our fourth stop. And yeah. this scenario is more, it's a 40 minute scenario or thereabouts. Give or take. don't really know this line um, to be honest the uh, Chatham uh, main line um, Loughborough Junction yeah I don't really know this this line um, like I know the Birmingham cross country but it's still fun to play nonetheless um, it's sort of universal carries over that's what I like about sort of when you learn to drive and when you learn, you know, the signals and stuff, it's all universal. It's not like, you know, if you drove a train on the Birmingham Cross City Lane and then when in and then you were transferred and went to drive one in London, the fundamentals carry over. It'll more than likely be the same loco. Um it'll more than likely have the same sort of features and safety features, for instance EWS and DRA. And all the signals mean the same thing, and you know, so it's it's sort of universal. Yeah, once you learn to drive, a driver can sort of go anywhere he wants, and drive any. And then the only thing that you learn is sort of the route um, and sort of special, um, special like bits along the route. For instance, if this bend is a bit more sharp, or if there's a hill coming up that sort of stuff but you learn that over time by playing a route constantly you haven't really had a look around this logo like I say it's an old model I think it's an old uh, dovetail model I think the enhancement pack from AP whoa I've not been paying attention to the braking <laughs> it's fine we'll stop relatively uh, easy on this one I hope Yeah, I think um, this model might be an old DC um, dovetail model. And Armstrong Powerhouse, I can't remember if they've updated the liveries for it or the sounds or something. I can't remember if it was a sound enhancement or if it was just an overall enhancement to the dovetail model. But as you can see, this is, you know, there is a lot of stuff here that's sort of. I wouldn't say Armstrong Powerhouse standard. Platform duty is complete very quick. Just notch through it straight away. We haven't 
haven't really had a chance to look at the outside of this, have we? Ooh, didn't mean that. I was hoping we'd... There we go, we'll just go into this. And we can fly down the track here. Let's get a nice spot. Sweet. As you can see, the stations aren't that far apart, and that's what I think sometimes I dislike about the commuter services is I can't I have to pay attention a lot more. Um, I can't just step outside the loco for a bit and look at the scenery, if you will, and the train going past because the stations just, you know turn up very quickly so you sort of have to be a little bit on the ball I don't know why the EWS was going off there because um, that wasn't a that wasn't a red or a, or a yellow signal it was green but yeah the platforms are relatively close to one another. So you do have to sort of be inside the cab most of the time rather than like a long distance or, or freight service where I can sort of be outside the local a lot more. But then at the same time I do like passenger services from a um, a sim point of view where it's like you know you are you are basically playing the train you're driving the train it's not just a case of oh I'm sitting back and letting letting it drive itself basically and some of the long freight um, freight scenarios can be like that in this game where it's it's a 90 minute scenario and once you've got the train up to speed it's like oh, just travel 30 odd miles at that speed so you're basically just sitting there doing nothing at least with the passenger services you do so sort of, you are doing stuff all the time platform duties complete can't there is a notch for there's a notch for it we're not getting any wheel slip so FPS has been pretty good so far on this. I am using the experimental uh, DX12 version of the game. Um, let's just slow down a little bit. Yeah, I am using the experimental DX12 version of the game just to see if it runs a bit smoother. Uh, it seems to be. Um, I know it's a bit laggy inside the cab here when I move, but that might just be because it's an old model. Yeah, FPS seems good and it hasn't crashed yet. <laughs> that might uh, that might change. Uh, I will let you know if it crashes though. But this game's been pretty good. Um, for crashing recently, it used to crash all the time. But um, recently it's been really good. They've made leaps and bounds in the performance of this game. Which is what I'd prefer. I'd prefer they make the function of the game better. Um, people say, well, the, the graphics, you know, and that's why they play Train Sim World, is the graphics are really amazing. But if you look at the fundamental function of Train Sim World, that game crashes a lot. There's so many bugs in it. 
Um, I mean, there was the whole thing of I tried to play that scenario and the trains and the land and the um, and the terrain and stuff were all glitching out into one another and yeah, it was just a bad experience. Um, I'd rather the game have terrible graphics but function amazingly well, high FPS, um, never crashes. That was a quick, you know, never crashes, functions literally as it should. The graphics don't have to be amazing. Um, it's like OMSI too, graphics don't have to be amazing. They can be blocky, old graphics, but as long as the, the function of the game works and does what it says on the tin, I'm happy. Which this, Train Sim Classic, does amazingly well. Graphics aren't the best, but they don't have to be. OMC2 does it really well. I'd say the only game that has amazing graphics and functions like it should is Euro Truck Simulator 2. <laughs> that has really good graphics, but still still says what it does on the tin, still functions as it should. Um, train Sim World is just, yeah, I've had too many bad experiences with that game and it, um, and as they keep bringing out new ones every year, it sort of feels like a bit of a money grab sometimes from them. Yeah, and I know it's from Dovetail Games as well, but it's two different teams working on Train Sim Classic and Train Sim World. Train Sim World dev team, it's not their fault, but they just don't seem to get it as Train Sim Classic dev team just sort of, they just, I don't know if they've just been because they've been doing it for ages. But they just sort of know how to make a good game. Where are we up to? Seven. So we're not far away now. Swanley. That is. Uh, not quite. Oh, there it is. And we can go. Let's just notch for it straight away. Not quite sure where that is, but it's it's only going to be about seven-ish miles away. We had a bit of a wheel slip there. Yeah, we're getting wheel slip. Sometimes they have it lets you know that there's wheel slip sometimes it'll be an indicator that lets you know that you are wheel slipping but you sort of just know sort of uh, if you are or not dash lights and it won't take us long to get up to this next one so yeah we're already on station 8 we're not too far away from finishing this scenario. Oh, another network southeast. That was a three or four car rake, I think. I think we're in eight, if I remember correctly. One, two, three. Four, two, three, four, five. Oh, we're a six. Sometimes you have a little clipboard here that tells you exactly what rake you are. So it's give it a computer. Ooh, I was not paying attention. It's all right though. Luckily, the braking on this is amazingly good. Um, I forget what they call it, but I don't know if it's got the reverse motor braking where it basically applies power to reverse the motors to help you brake. So we've got to be here at 26, Swan near 26, 426. Pretty sure we'll uh, 
we'll get close to that. It might not be exact, but. See our amps here. Acceleration rate, brake rate, yeah. So that'll be, I'm pretty sure it'll have the um, reverse motor braking where it basically applies power to the to the motors in reverse to brake, help with braking. No co-driver today, and this doesn't work. Shame it's a bit of a foggy, foggy scenario this one, but because I I do like it when it's like sunny and blue skies and clouds, they look really good in this, especially with the um, Armstrong weather enhancement and um, sky enhancement packs. They are very good. I would say if you were going to get an Armstrong powerhouse enhancement, I'd get the track, the weather, and the sky enhancements. They are some of the best to make this game look the best it can and they've pretty much included every single English route in the pack um, with the, what it enhances and when they do release new routes they do update the packs to include new routes which is nice Far now, yep, seven mile ish. That last plat, that those last couple of stations are a bit more further away from each other. You are actually supposed to stop at those blue signs because uh, that tells you how how much platform you've got for your train. So the six and the eight rake cars need to stop at those blue signs when the four rake will be the four and two rake will be further back. But uh, as long as it's all in the platform, it's not a problem really. Some uh, scenario editors actually put the marker that you get in the right place so you physically have to stop at that marker because if you don't you will fail the scenario or you will fail the, the objective some uh, some just put it smack bang in the middle of the station so it doesn't matter where you stop as long as you are on that marker you've sort of completed that task I can't remember what those were, the three, three, one, three? I can't remember. Three, two, no, it's not a three, two, three, because that's the Birmingham Cross City line. Three, six, six, I think it is. Three, six, six. Getting into a bit more of a built up area now. This is a very cool station, I must admit, with this sort of old Victorian brick wall here. This quite quaint little station. Quite a long station as well, actually. It goes all the way down there. But you see these little numbers. And that's where the four rake coaches would stop. And we would need to stop down here on these ones. But we are basically in the station 
now. As you can see, our PN of the logo is in. Have I got the cab light on? Yeah, just very dark in here. <laughs> we are under a cover. And yeah, we're uh, not too far from finishing now. We're going for about we've been going for about 35-ish minutes, something like that. That's what we like to see, ticks on all of them. If you've got a, uh, a cross on one, you have failed. It's not so bad in standard, and that's why a lot of the Armstrong Powerhouse and uh, other scenarios from th other third parties they are set in standard because if you cross a red light it's not going to win the scenario if you fail a uh, objective it won't I don't think it will um, fail the scenario either when in Korea it, it does <laughs> you cross a red light you fail you miss an objective you fail now we've got yellow coming up That's a long one, eight car, I think those. Yeah, eight rake. So we might be waiting a little bit, depending on if we come into a red. Oh, no, it's uh, on the opposite side. We've been having greens all the way. It's actually a really nice one to drive without the hood on because when you brake look you can see where the brake is. You don't necessarily need the hood but I just like it because it tells you how far away from the platform you are. darker now coming up to uh, 20 past 4 in, uh, in the autumn in the UK it's what it does get dark very quickly it gets dark about 5 o'clock in the um, winter and autumn so uh, pretty typical really sort of the home time Passenger service, commuter. Yeah, very, very good. We are making good time. 26, we might just make it on that. See the clouds have sort of changed a bit. It's not as foggy anymore, and we're sort of starting to see some uh, some clouds. That looks really good. Saying that's ninety. I, some lines are. 
bit quicker. I think the normal speed for a passenger commuter is 75. But, you know, some some routes and some surfaces are 100 mile an hour plus. Especially the uh, voyages and stuff, if they're going long distance, non-stop, they can be, um, yeah, 100 mile an hour plus. I don't know why we're slowing down so much because we're nowhere near the station yet. We will be going downhill here a little bit. use for speed and distance is I sort of try and keep it relatively the same number so in, in, for instance we're 70 0 0.70 away I would say 70 speed there would be fine so at the moment we're coming down to about 50 I will start braking in a sec I'll start braking now and it won't be, I won't be applying too much brake until we get a bit closer. We will be coming into this a bit hot though, so we'll apply the second brake. I'm sort of keeping the numbers fairly similar. Give or take uh, 10 mile an hour or so. And it's actually uh, brightened up for some reason. Uh, even though it is autumn and it's coming up to half or 25 past four. I would expect it to be getting darker not lighter <laughs> but you never know maybe the sun's come out it's brightened up a bit there's a digger over there doing some work see there's a 10 car 12 car rake so this station's pretty long uh, and then Swanley is only about three mile away. We got two minutes, give or take, to get there. Two minutes to go, two mile. We'll be rolling up about a minute late, I think, or thereabouts. So look what these diggers were doing. See this map sort of like it's a bit bare over there. But then you look over here with all the houses and it looks very, very uh full, very lived in. That's what I'd like to see from trains so very lived in rather than just empty like that. We'd better get a move on because uh We've got a minute until we've got to be there. This one's been quite fun. It's been nice taking this out. This uh, 465. I do like these sort of tubular, you know, commuter trains I always have. They've been around forever.
yeah, I'm starting to discover a bit more of the third party stuff. I've, the Dovetail stuff's fine, Dovetail scenarios and, and logos and stuff, and their new routes are pretty good, but when you start getting into like third party stuff like Alan Thompson Sim, Armstrong Powerhouse, Vulcan Products, um, Just Trains, they make they make their models super super like well made. All the buttons work. You can tell a lot of love goes into the making maps as well. A lot of them make incredible maps. The only downside is it's not just a one-time purchase um, where you you purchase say an Armstrong Powerhouse enhancement pack. And it comes with scenarios it's not just that all oh, everything that I need to play those scenarios is in that pack you sort of need to buy all their products um, for you to play even just one scenario which is the downside um, they're all the same just trains and Thompson's team they're all the same really when it comes to you need to buy all their products to play it when dovetail is if you buy a route from Dovetail, the scenarios are guaranteed to work. Just off the bat, one-time purchase, you play them. Everything you need is in included in that DLC. But uh, it's just that level of what level of sim you want. If you want a bit more realistic, you know, a bit more simulation, then the third you can't beat the third party stuff. But it, you, yeah, it's it's a costly, costly thing. It's like owning a, it's like owning a uh, model railway. It's very costly at model railways, but it's your hobby. Right, so that is our last stop. So we will jump outside the loco and uh, see how we did. So that was the Chatham main line, the class. 465 in Network Southeast, and we were playing the scenario 2B49 Blackfairs to Seven Oaks. And uh, it was a real, really good scenario, really enjoyed it. It was about a 40 minute scenario, um, we were stopping a few times. But yeah, really enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.